I'm Charlotte Wilkerson. I am uh, Director of Student Success for the College of Engineering and Science. For those of you who are computer science, cyber engineering, electrical engineering, biomedical engineering majors, I'll be your advisor for your freshman year. Those who are not in those majors will be advised by Ms. Tasha Smith uh, for your freshman year, okay? So just to get an idea, where, where are you guys in the curriculum? Uh, math, 100, math 101, Math 240, uh, Math 240, okay, uh, engineering students, okay, most everybody, okay, very good, very good, okay, um, so usually when Ms. Tasha and I go to classrooms, we're talking about advising, okay, because we uh, we've, we've done a little something different this year. We've decided to go into the classrooms a little bit earlier um, just to kind of give you some helpful information that we've gathered over the years in working with, with freshman students because you have your own unique challenges when you come to university. Uh, most of you have been at home and you know living with the same people all your life. And so it's a big disruption. I mean, it's a pleasant, it's a happy disruption, you know, hopefully, but it is, it's different. Uh, one of the things, can y'all hear me okay in the back? Okay, good, good. Um, so anyway, um, we've put together just some things that may be helpful for students. Now, I know you've probably gotten some of this information from Mr. from Dr. Hartman, uh, our, you know, your engineering faculty or um, you know, some other faculty that you've interacted with, but, and so some of it will be a repetition, some of it you've heard from your parents or a teacher from high school, but it certainly bears repeating because there are some things that you just need to, um, need to do in order to kind of get you on that path to success, okay? So, um, I'm going to begin, and really they're just, there, there are two major things. I don't want to choke you on trying to cram an elephant's worth of information, right? Um, but one of the most important things you can do is just show up. Wherever you're supposed to be, show up. Um, a very dear friend of ours, um, his family owns a fast food conglomerate. They have stores nationwide, and he hires a lot of college students, a lot of young people. And he said the big difference he sees in what is going to make a person successful and not is just showing up. That's like 70% of it. Because if you are going to take the time to show up somewhere, hopefully you're going to, you know, have the the drive to to engage and to make the most of that time, whether it's in class or in a tutoring session or with an organizational meeting or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, so the first thing is show up, okay? Make sure that, um, and in order to do that, you need to make sure you have a calendar. I know eight o'clocks can be a real challenge. Uh, in fact, I had a student who was really distraught because he missed his first two eight o'clock classes just because the, um, you know, he had the alarm on his phone and you just hit snooze and the next thing you know, it's, you know, the class is over. Um, so our solution, we kind of talked it through. Um, our solution was that um, he ordered this, you know, cheap, obnoxious alarm clock off Amazon and, you know, put it in a different place in the room where you had to at least get up out of bed and go turn the thing off. And so you would be more likely to be at least alert enough not to not to go back to sleep, you know, after the snooze. But what happens, and we, we don't even really think about it, maybe, or maybe you have, but when, you know, the providing that, you know, you've lived in the same place all your life or with the same people, you have this biological and psychological rhythm that goes. Just for instance, when I was a kid, my dad would get up super early and read. And so even though we would still be asleep, it's kind of like something is picking up that, you know, hey, it's, it's about four o'clock in the morning, you know, and then about six o'clock, my mom would make coffee, right? And so that's, so you're kind of have these little cues going on. And even though, you know, you know, it's not quite time to get up, there, there are those little things that 
are familiar, you know, kind of comforting and you know, okay, in about an hour, I'm going to have to get up, right? Well, when you come to university, that's gone. So that invisible structure that kind of kept you on track, um, you know, you knew about when dinner was going to be and all that sort of thing. That's all gone when you moved, when you come to university and you're living with, you know, strangers and you are in a strange place, you're having to create your own order out of chaos, essentially. Okay. So, because if we don't do anything, if we don't plan, it does devolve into chaos. You don't just accidentally slip up into being an engineer. It takes very intentional steps. Okay. And that's ordering your life. That's large. That's a big part of it as your, as a freshman. Okay. So, um, and in order to show up where you're supposed to be, I would strongly recommend that you either um, get some kind of planner. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm not going to be one that gets hung up on that. I have four children and they all have four different ways of keeping up with themselves. So I would never, you know, you have to find what works for you. If it's something on your phone, get something on your phone. If you'd rather have, you know, uh, an obnoxious orange psychedelic note some, uh, I've seen some students have a whiteboard that sets up their week on their whiteboard. Whatever it is, make sure it's something that you will refer to. You don't want to just sit there and go idle because that defeats, you know, the purpose of it. But get something and put uh, your class periods on it. Um, some students, I the whiteboard thing, which was really clever, they would put um, a week's worth of information on there. So they would put whatever homework was due. Um, if there was an exam, they would put the exam up there. If there were meetings, you know, like with ESA or, um, you know, if they had, were planning to go to tutoring, they put all of this on their whiteboard. And then once a day had passed, they would, you know, just put a slash through it, right? Okay, so anyway, just whatever it is that you need to, to keep you on track. Um, now, of course, you've been in long enough to know that your, your college schedule is very different from high school. High school, you were just being shuffled from one room to another. You know, you didn't have these big breaks in the day where you absolutely had nobody that, you know, you had to account. You didn't have to account for yourself to anyone. So if you've got an eight o'clock class and then you don't have another class until, you know, 11 or, or noon, um, you can fall in a real danger of twiddling that time away. And what we don't want to do is get in a situation where you have large swaths of time that you are not using to do homework, read over things, um, kind of read ahead, um, you know, prepare for exams. We don't want to get in the habit of wasting those nice big blocks of time and then you getting yourself in a situation where you have to study at night. And so those things that you might want to do, go to an organizational meeting or, or you know, safely hang out with friends, that's not an option for you. Or if you do opt to do that, then you really feel guilt, you know, the the guilt hangover the, the next morning about, oh, I could kick myself, I didn't get stuff done, and I had that big piece of time. So if you would try to take your day and put as much into eight hours, you look at it as a job, I am working from eight to five. That's when I'm going to class, and that's when I'm doing my homework. Clearly, you'll have to do some at night. I mean, I'm not saying that that's not going to happen, but you have, you really need to try to maximize that day as much as you can, okay? Just so we won't have those, but it's not a guilt, it's a moral hangover. That's what my son used to call it. He would, he would uh, kick himself whenever, you know, he didn't, when he was in grad school and he was writing and he would take an afternoon off, you know, it, it would just get off with him and say, I'm, I'm having a moral hangover. So anyway, we want to avoid that, you know, because that's, um, we, we want to stay engaged and, and very proactive. Um, another thing, be careful about the company you keep, okay? Uh, statistically speaking, about 50% of freshman engineering students, this is across the nation, about we're going to lose 50% of you, you won't graduate, okay? 
we want to avoid that with you guys, okay? So one of the things you need to do is you are going to hang out with, with people because we're social animals. You wanna make sure you find friends who are have the same motivation and the same academic goals as you, okay? Uh, we don't want to let people with poor study skills um, or who are skipping class, we, we don't want to let ourselves get pulled back because of them. And on the flip side, you don't wanna be that person. You want to be the kind of person that you want to attract. If you wanna be an engineer, like I said, you're not just gonna accidentally, oh, wow, I just kind of slipped into being an engineer. That does not happen. It's very intentional. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's a culmination of making good decisions and good choices every day, whether it's, I'm gonna study for this two hours instead of goofing off, or I'm going to, um, I'm going to go to the study group rather than, you know, going and streaming Netflix or whatever everybody does nowadays. But so just understand that that's those are some of the biggest pitfalls that I see um, are, you know, there's just not uh, we're just not staying focused and engaged. All right. Um, now, we ask some of our students, our COS ambassadors, uh, some of our student workers, some of our student org officers to provide the best advice that they could give for themselves as a freshman or, you know, if they could look back and say, what would I tell myself as a freshman, what would it be? Or what were the things that you were proud of that you did as a freshman? So this is coming straight from students, just a, just a, you know, a couple of three years older than you are. Okay. So it's not just some old person saying, oh, this is what you got to do. Okay. These, these are actual students that we've surveyed um, just about a month ago. So the first thing is um, avoid putting off schoolwork until the last minute. Start early so you can ask questions before it's too late. Okay, the second is take advantage of your professor's office hours. It may not seem like it, but they truly care about your success. Putting in the work will show them that you are willing to improve and they'll be glad. Number three is my advice for freshmen is to not be afraid to ask for help. Go to tutoring, form study groups, and go to the professor's office hours when you don't understand something. So many people want you to succeed and are more than willing to help. Um, and, and that's true. One thing I'll tell you about um, faculty now, of course you notice that, sorry, Dr. Hartman, but <laughs> Maybe you don't feel like your professors are as approachable as your you know, sweet little high school teachers, okay? They are, trust me, they are, they are very driven and they are just saturated in their, in their discipline, you know, in a good way. And so, no, we are not going to reach out to you and say, hey, how are you doing, honey? This is part of the growing up process. You know, this is part of the, you need to be, I mean, it may, feel like a bold move for you to reach out to a faculty, but that's part of your stretching as an adult, okay? Don't be afraid because there are so many people that are here to help you. Now understand this too, we all have bad days. So you may come to me one day where I am just ready to pull my hair out. It's not you, okay? And I am not going to be upset with you. And I hope you aren't upset with me. But just understand all because you go to somebody and you, you know, try to get help and you feel like, um, you know, wow, I don't know what's wrong with them. Just understand we're all human and we do want to help you. Um, does that make sense? I mean, sometimes we all have bad days when we, become, we may come across cranky or whatever. Well, don't let that dissuade you from going, you know, to see, to see whoever you need to see, okay? And so it's different from high school. You know, the personalities are different. Our interactions are different. Uh, and we're really wanting to, to help you in your growth, not only to becoming an engineer, but your growth as a, as a responsible adult, okay? And we wanna help you take care of your business. So come see us. Um, okay, um, another thing, and I love this, find a place on campus that can be used as a constant study spot other than your room. This could be Bogard, IESB, which is the new engineering and science building, 
Tolliver or the library. And um, this is one of the things that, that I've told students. I had a student several years ago tell me that he had done this. And I guess my, um, my best example you know, of this is you're, you're making this place sacred. So, you know, when you go to church, you're not going to play basketball there, vice versa, when you're going, I mean, opposite, when you go to a basketball gym, you know, with your basketball and your gym clothes on, you're not going to a restaurant. You're, so make this place sacred. I mean, I want you to find that place and you know, I'm not messing around on my phone. I'm not pulling up apps that aren't school related. You're, you're trying to find that spot to where you know when you sit there, you're going to be cracking open a book, or you're going to be opening up relative uh, relevant things on your computer uh, to your classes. Okay. Now, what this does is when you you know a few weeks of doing this, when you sit down at that spot, it's like there's not even going to be a temptation anymore because you know it's kind of weird the biology and the psychology there it's like okay I'm sitting here and this is what I'm doing in this spot okay so it's going to take a while to make a good habit like that but that's really important um, but I, I talked to this student about that you know we I, I told him about the previous student that had told me about that and and it really again these are some of our bright bright students I mean it's not that they've had it easy but they have figured out the things that have really helped them. Okay. So just can think I about interject real quick. Sure. So, and that's going to all right now because um, that's uh, the, the building caddy corner where most of the electrical engineering, computer science class, and stuff like that are taught. Um, because those classrooms are so small, we've effectively got pretty much the whole first floor designated as mm -hmm. quiet study areas for people to either attend online classes using earbuds or you can just go sit in there. Uh, and, and handle your business. So that's a good place. It's real close by as well, um, where it's pretty much a ghost town. So if you want to get some nice quiet time by yourself to study, that's a, that's a good place to do it. Yeah. All right, sorry. So, oh no, thank you very much. I hadn't even, but you're right. Uh, it really is a, um, a very quiet in there now. Okay. Um, and we talked about this too, but, but one of our students said, find friends who hold you accountable for your schoolwork. And I can't, I cannot stress that enough. You know, you, you probably grew up with parents or grandparents or teachers at some point in your life that said, you're known by the company you keep, okay? So, and they're, you know, in that regard, they were talking about don't, don't hang around with the bad kids and get in trouble. Well, this is not really a, a bad thing thing necessarily a good bad thing but this is more of you need to align yourself with people who you you want to be like this is this is the kind of study partner I want so you need to think of this in terms or are these people who um, you know are, are going to meet their educational goals if they are um, you know it's it's a good idea to think about you know forging friendships there um, again I it, it really makes me sad when I see the, the students come in who get, get caught up in, in, and we all know them, we have students and they'll come, you know, a year or two until they, they crash and burn academically. And we do try to help those students, um, but you don't want to be pulled down in those sorts of destructive mindsets, if that makes sense. So you're spending a lot of money. This is a big investment, you know, to, to get a college degree. So we want to just make sure that we, we stay focused and we remember what we're here for. Okay. Um, the last one, and this is one of my favorite students on campus. Um, he is a senior and his advice was find ways to get connected to the university, whether that's through an organization, a job, or a hobby find some way to connect and make a difference. Um, this student, he, um, well, first of all, he's involved in just, just about everything. He's involved with uh, CHAMP, our um, mascot, um, ESA with his professional, uh, the, the uh, student chapter of the professional organization for his major. Um, he's involved with athletics um, and he hung around our office 
to the point where when things would come in, like when we would have, when we were moving into the new building, we had desks, we had all kinds of stuff. I mean, it was a, it was a big to do. And he was always there. He wasn't one of our student workers. I mean, he was just there and he genuinely wanted to help. He wanted to, to plug in and consequently, you know, the, the faculty got to know him very well. The staff in our office got to know him, but he was always there, always willing to help and give back. He had such a maturity in that regard uh, for someone so young. Um, so one of the things you need to think about is is what do you have to to offer? I mean, I know right now you're freshmen, but he started looking at ways to help freshmen when he was a sophomore. Okay, um, end of story on that. We had a position come open uh, for a student worker in our office, and so when we were sitting there and saying, "Okay, well, so and so's graduated, we need to pick up somebody," he was the first person that was on our mind. It was like unanimous. We're hiring, you know, we're we're getting him. We were so thrilled about that. You need to be that person, okay? You, we are, um, we're we're very collab. I mean, um, collaborative. Yeah, I guess that's the word. So, you know, right from the very beginning with your engineering classes, and we have you working together in teams and helping each other. I want you to continue that mindset going into your sophomore year, continue to help your classmates and, and be a good classmate, but also think about ways to help those, those freshmen coming up, okay? Because that's part of, um, that, that's part of becoming an engineer. You have, you have a, you're going into a, you know, a, a stellar profession. You've got a lot to offer as an engineer and you've got to think it's, it's one of those things to, to you know who much is given much is required well i mean you you won't believe the things that some of our engineers have been involved in you know as far as um helping on a on a larger level i know we had our asme engineers were working on um this was several years ago through asme they were working on a clean water project you know like for places across the world that have that don't have access to um Readily, readily, access, ready access to water like we do, you know, clean, fresh water. So, there, are, you know, you you need to step up um, on the small things as far as making a difference, so that you know you'll you'll be ready to step up and assume those big, you know, those big challenges that um, that you may need up in your profession someday. Okay, so keep a good schedule find good friends, stay engaged, don't become lackadaisical, okay? Now, not everybody is going to like engineering. I mean, it, it happens, you may say, you know, this is just not lighting me up. I like my chemistry class a lot. Well, we can talk about that. You know, we can say, well, if you, you know, if you've really given this a try and you've really given it, you know, thought, is it, is it because you really don't like it or is it because I'm struggling uh, to keep up or I'm struggling with the grade. We want to make sure that our, um, that, that what's driving us to leave engineering is proper because we don't want any regrets, okay? Um, I want to drop engineering because it's hard is not a good excuse, okay? We need to talk about motivation, drive, what is it that you really want to do and sometimes that will be engineering. It's just maybe something's going on in the background that we need to talk about, or we need to get you, you know, to somebody to talk about that. Um, but I did have a student um, last year, and she just she gave it a try. She went through all it, the entire engineering 120 series, and she did fine. But she said, "I just don't like this." But she said, "I love my chemistry classes. I think I want to." do chemistry and, and do pharmacy school, you know, from there, which that's totally fine. But we want to make sure that you, you get into something that really interests you and is, um, is going to keep you, you know, actively engaged, motivated to, uh, to finish over the next four years. Okay. Y'all have any questions? Done any of that? Okay. Again, I know that a lot of this are, you know, these are things that you've heard, and you'll hear from Dr. Hartman. Um, but we, I just cannot over.
And as far as getting things figured out your freshman year, as far as what you ultimately want to major in, look, it's, it's going to change a lot. But the great thing about our Engineering 120 series is that it gives you um, a little taste of all the engineering disciplines we have. You have your chemistry, of course, you'll have your physics in your spring quarter. Um, so it's going to help you make decisions, sometimes by elimination. You know, I, every year we have students that say, oh my gosh, I can't stand that, I can't code. Well, no, not everybody, I mean, you can, but you don't enjoy it maybe. Well, engineering is not necessarily coding. So we're gonna push you toward something that's not heavy on coding. Maybe you wanna be mechanical, okay? Um, but that's part of the sifting process, okay? So all because you don't like coding doesn't mean that you don't like engineering. It just means that we're gonna keep you away probably from cyber, electrical, maybe. Um, maybe, yeah. not yeah. Depends on whether you're going into like digital controls and things like that, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. We've got such a broad field. Some of it is heavily coding based and others it's, you'll never see. It. So right, right. Is. So all because there's one aspect that you don't like, it's not the whole, you know, the whole experience is not going to be immersed in that, you know, one thing, unless you're, you know, computer science and if you don't like to code, we definitely need to get you out of that. But it's it's all to kind of help you, help guide you. Sometimes that process of elimination is good. You know, that, that helps us because knowing what you don't want to do is sometimes, you know, just as important as knowing what you do want to do because it helps, helps eliminate that. But make sure that you, you know, your, your faculty's office hours, they're, they're definitely there to help, you know, as far as if you have any questions about, you know, wanting to get something, something right in your mind that maybe you're confused about, but also, um, talk to your faculty about why did you choose, you know, what you went into. So that's, that's going to be really important. Um, that's my oh, oh, okay. I'm there. sorry. No, uh, so, you text that out so everybody can't see all of this. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do I need to, I'll, uh, <laughs> well, I think it just went away. I was wanting to make sure nobody was, um, uh, let me just kill this program. Okay. I, I never didn't think want about anybody that. to be, be trying to chat with me and, <laughs> and not be able to, to get my attention. Um, but anyway, yeah, so we're, we're there to, you know, to help you make those decisions. One thing I will tell you about um, making the best use of your faculty's office hours, um, these, these people have spent a lot of time um, really, you know, digging into their, you know, their respective discipline. The last thing they want and without putting forth any kind of effort to try to understand. Okay. I can say personally that absolutely drives me crazy when a student says, well, I don't even know how to start this problem. And it's like, okay, well, you've not been paying attention for three weeks. Right, right. That's exactly right. So, I mean, even if I mean, sometimes you just pick up that pencil and you just you form the problem. I mean, you write it out. I mean, that's at least starting somewhere. And then you go back and I mean, the age of the internet is just miraculous. I mean, we've got um, some of our faculty put out, you know, great video tutorials that help our students at all. It's all free. You just have to go out there and, you know, find it. So make sure that you put forth the time because when you do that, first of all, it's going to be really frustrating for you because you're going to sit there and say, I don't understand. And so your teacher is going to be doing this Socratic thing and throwing questions right back at you, right? So you need to go through that exercise yourself and pinpoint exactly what it is. Where am I getting stuck? And that way you have an intelligent question for your professor and you can get somewhere quickly instead of just having a frustrating experience, okay? It, the professor's not there to, you know, to go through the whole lesson and, you know, that he's already done in class. That's not what it's for. This is, this is fine tuning type stuff, you know, tweaking, okay? So um, it's one thing I will say, you know, just like you have athletes or you have, are, you know, artistic performers, they don't get to where they are without putting in, you know, that, that sweat, that grit, you know, when nobody's watching, 
okay? They, they have to go out and they have to get up and run at you know, five every morning, or they have to go lift weights and that sort of thing um, to get to where they're going to, to be you know, strong and accomplished. And although you can't, you don't see visible results like that, that's exactly what's happening intellectually. When you sit down and you find that quiet spot and you open your book and you struggle, okay? It's, a, it's anything worth, worth having is gonna be a struggle to a certain extent. That's why I say we're not quitting engineering because it's a struggle. That's not, a, that's not acceptable. It's anybody who's an engineer has, has embraced the struggle, okay? That's how you, that's how you get to, to be an engineer. Um, but even though you can't see, you know, hey, I'm getting faster or I'm getting stronger or whatever, it's happening, okay? So you're, you're reaching a level in your freshman year going to these classes that when you get to your sophomore year, you're going to pre be presented with new challenges, but that freshman year has provided that growth that you need to be able to go through your statics and your circuits and your thermo at that point, okay? So just remember that. I know everybody gets out of high school with a 4.0 now. It's not going to be that way here necessarily, okay? Um, you know, some do, but so many don't. Don't let that discourage you, okay? So are there any questions? I hope I haven't run anybody off. I, I mean, I listen, well, I'm a liberal arts major, but I am like an engineering and science groupie. So, I mean, y'all are just, in fact, Dr. Hartman was a student here whenever I was. I was, I was... That before you got there. You <laughs> helped me figure things out way back when I was an undergrad and continued to do so for the untold number of years I was here getting four degrees here. <laughs> But I'll tell you, if, if y'all are half the student that Dr. Hartman was, you're going to be great. And I mean, he was, he was so wonderful to work with. Absolutely. So, but y'all, I, I will tell you, you've, I mean, I know I am so biased, but y'all have picked just the best college on campus as far as I'm concerned. We have some awesome people. And again, they really want to work with you, have some fabulous student organizations, um, uh, it, again, and it may be your big bowl thing that you do your fall quarter is you learn to talk to us or go ask, come see us, you know, just say, hey, my name is so-and-so and, you know, you're my advisor or whatever. Um, because when you break the ice and you do that with one person, with, with me or Miss Tasha or go see Dr. Hartman, it makes it easier the next time. So by the time you need to go to that math you know, professor about that problem that's just keeping you up all night, it won't, it, the, um, that anxiety will be gone, right? So, um, so that's what I'm going to challenge you to do. Don't be afraid of us, okay? With, um, we wouldn't have jobs if y'all didn't come see us and and uh, you know take advantage of what we got to offer. Okay, so um, advising, we're going to be sending a series of emails out to you. Um, I know in the past we sent out a huge email to some students and we just ended up creating a lot of confusion. It made a lot of sense to us because we've done this for years. Um, I know you all went through the virtual orientation. We're going to be doing something similar, but actually it won't be as bad as orientation. You know how we sent you the um, advising form in the email and you had to fill it out and then you had to go to a Google doc and you had to fill it out and load up, upload that advising form. It's not gonna be that. We're just going to have a Google doc. We're trying to make it as straightforward as possible but we're going to be sending a series of easily identifiable emails. Ah, that's, a, that's an email about advising with a, with a appropriate header, you know, subject line. Um, just so we can have you start thinking about things before we go into that week of advising, okay? So be on the lookout for those. Um, just a heads up, curriculum sheet, that's gonna be really important. You need to find your curriculum sheet, latech.edu, type in advising materials in the little Google search bar. And that first, um, uh, the first site, the first link 
you're going to click on that and it's going to have all of our curriculum sheets. So you you really, you know, that that's your roadmap through to graduation. So that's going to be really, really important uh, that you're on top of that. You need to know um, does my curriculum require specific social sciences? Does it require a literature class or a history class? Those are important things uh, because most of you will be taking those kind of things in addition to your engineering, math, and chemistry class for the um, for the winter quarter. Okay, so um, just curi out of curiosity, is everybody in calm this quarter? How many are in calm? That's not an embarrassing question. That's okay. So that's three. Okay. Yeah. Make sure try to get in calm in the winter. Okay. So that that's going to be what I recommend strongly. Well, I really think in your freshman year you're going to cause me or whoever your program chair is a huge amount of headache later on by having to substitute a higher level class mm -hmm. for that freshman class because you're literally not allowed to take it if you're not a freshman. Right. And Miss Joyce gets to hollering at us. Yes. And we don't want Miss Joyce hollering at us. <laughs> She's the lady that checks everybody out for graduation. <laughs> so anyway, um, but we're going to be sending those emails out. So be looking for them. Again, it's going to be tidbits of information. If it's just like anything, if you'll just handle it, you know, right then, uh, you know, make sure you're at a time where you can open it up and actually do, you know, the one minute exercise, whatever it is. Uh, it'll be done. You know, you'll be, it'll be over with. But um, anyway, I think that's, that's pretty much it, unless anybody has any questions. I was trying to see, I don't see anybody on chat. So everybody's good. Okay. Y'all got exams coming up. Yeah. Yeah. The first freshman engineering exam. Okay. Next mm -hmm. Now you had math this week. Tomorrow. tomorrow tomorrow okay well good luck with that um again study buddies y'all i mean you don't need to um you don't need to suffer in silence okay so you gotta gotta find a good group to study with okay uh, just to remind you guys you know i taught the engineering 120 and 121 classes for several years i do have office hours from 7 30 to 11 tomorrow as well as 7 30 to 11 a.m. on Monday, so if you have any questions about that stuff, feel free to drop by and uh, ask a question. I got no problem asking questions about that or really anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You got a, a rock star yeah. FYA yeah. teacher. It wasn't this silly uh, <laughs> pandemic. I used to do um, three hours of tutoring every week for free for all those students, specifically in circuit analysis and all that kind of stuff. But uh, with this and the social distancing restrictions, it's a little bit harder to do. Yeah. Um, but uh, the student organization that I'm the faculty advisor of, maybe Kappa Nu, is going to start with uh, tutoring again virtually through Zoom. I think actually starting next week as well. So I can give you guys all that information. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay. Okay, just moving your hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and do seriously, y'all, take advantage of that. Um, these student organizations provide that kind of tutoring. I need to start to look into their situation. So, so, so that, uh, anyway, that's that's it.